Good evening, Dice Roll fans. Yeah, Good yeah. evening, Dice Roll fans. We're Whoop. back and welcome to Self Isolation Dungeons and Dragons 5th Edition campaign set in the world of Eberron. My name's Tom and I will be your Dungeon Master for this evening. And hopefully, let's see, can we get. Can we get. Oh, okay, hang on. Let's just try. Whoop. Hold. Oh, oh, please, oh, please oh, hold. Oh, please hold. Oh, oh, there's, so, there's something happening. Uh, there's the something happening. Uh, 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 is. is my head going to like reflect and blank? No, later? fortunately, we uh, we solved oh. the. Oh, look oh. at that. Isn't that lovely? Oh, I'm so high up. Yeah. I know. Who's that ugly dude in the green headphones? <laughs> Who the hell is this guy? <laughs> so joining me on this Valentine's evening adventure are our very own band of romantic cherubs. The Casanova of crime, Richard Badger. Oh, well, thank you very much. I, I'm Badger, and I will be playing Mick Dagger, the uh, swish, uh, the shifter rogue. <laughs> it's hard to say. <laughs> In this lovely campaign. The shifter. Our very own agent <laughs> of Cupid, James Bulgarian Harper. Good okay. evening, dice roll fans. <laughs> I am Mike Your Bedrock, the digger, and I am a storm a warforged storm surge sorcerer. That's even harder to say. Jeez. <laughs> also on the team tonight we have Venus's favourite son, James Oakley. Because <laughs> it rhymes with <laughs> Venus. <laughs> yeah, I, I am Oakley and I'm playing the human wizard Callus Lanick. And finally, our very own Aphrodite of Anarchy, Miss Emily Westcott. Hello. Uh, I'm playing Nota Dwarf C de Civi. Can't, oh my god, we all can't talk this evening. <laughs> um, uh, Mark of Scribing No Morglock. Okay. So tonight's adventure takes place two days after the opening night of the newly refurbished nightclub, The Bountiful Vine. Having spent the last 48 hours catering for and cleaning up after the rowdy Clawfoot Brigade, you're finally enjoying some time off. And as you sit down in one of the booths in the Bountiful Vine, Clod, your dwarven caretaker, wanders over and hands your group an envelope sealed with a familiar dragon's head design in silver wax. As you open the note, and for the benefit of people on the stream, transition. Oh, yes. Oh, my dear friends, off today. Oh, I am on this. form. My dear friends, congratulations on a splendid opening night. The evening entertainment of the Bountiful Vine was a roaring success. In future, however, I must insist to avoid violent public executions of would-be assailants. Whilst I've been able to turn the watch the other way this time, I expect more discretion from you in the future. Come see me immediately. I have further work for you. Regards, D. And as you uh, read over this letter, you find that inside the envelope is a business card. It reads, Clifton <clears throat> Chaucer, Fine Art and Portraiture, Myshan Gardens, Lower Central, Shan, Sittings by Appointment Only. Hmm. I see. We're going to get our portraits painted. Oh, damn right. <clears throat> Let's go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Montage through this. So you make Transition! Way... Transition. We've already transitioned back to cameras. We've got cameras again. Lovely cameras. Oh, I do like this. Wizardry. I had to wash my hair and everything. Oh, the effort. I love it. Bit so, it. <laughs> um, you make your way over to uh, the uh, lower central district of Shan, which is um, populated by uh, the more sort of um, artsy communities. There's theatres, there's galleries, there's um, concert halls. And in amongst all of this, uh, you find uh, Chaucer's studio. Uh, sign outside saying, Clifton Chaucer's fine art and portraiture. Um, there is a um, little plaque in the window indicating that uh, their work has, be has been displayed in the Brelish Museum of Fine Art. And there are some very gorgeous lifelike portrait work 
going on in the window. And as you make your way into uh, the workshop, there's a little, little tingling bell above the door. Um, and at the back of this workshop space, this very sort of um, open, almost like conservatory area, lots of big, full aspect windows, lots of natural light coming in. Uh, you can see uh, this uh, half elf, long, wavy golden hair tied back, just working away at an easel. And the subject of what they're painting um, is uh, Dion, your contact with the Boromar clan. Um, same, quite sort of feline features. Uh, standing in a sort of very Roman style um, toga, posing quite grandly on this uh, sort of podium. The hair is um, a sort of um, almost like an auburn, sort of lion's mane colour today. And they just sort of acknowledge you subtly and continue to stand there, just, just posing. There's a, a moment of silence and you just, uh, from your left, you hear a, a sort of movement. And as you turn, you see reclining on a, a chaise long is uh, Dion. Uh, he looks over and goes, ah, my friends, welcome, welcome, welcome. How do you, how do you like my commission? Looking good, big D. <laughs> Looking yes. good. Yes, it takes... Oh. <laughs> an awful lot of effort to maintain an illusion like this for as, as long as I have. I can pretty much keep this thing up all night. <laughs> anyway. Uh, this is how the it really does begin. look like a fine rock. <laughs> I'm glad you appreciate it. <laughs> anyway. My congratulations once again on a successful opening night. Uh, as you may be aware, it is our beloved matriarch, Elira Boromar's birthday, coming up soon, and I have thought of the perfect gift for her. Happy uh, birthday is it me? to it's... her. Am I the gift? It's... Happy birthday to my, her. My, 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 uh, t <coughs> Motions <laughs> for you to, to be signed. Too, too early? <laughs> it's it, it, too early. Uh, also, not today. R uh, right, right. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. new to birthdays. It's, it's it's fine, totally understandable. However, I do signal. require uh, your skills uh, with regards to acquiring a suitable gift uh, for Lady Alira. Um, you may remember the uh, chest of arcane tomes and schematics that you recovered from. Our, uh, our friend on the lightning rail um, about a week ago. Uh, well, it turns out that uh, this particular cache of historic artifacts would be a perfect gift for Lady Alira. Unfortunately, they all appear to be in some sort of uh, encrypted writing. Um, the notes that my associates have been able to translate, indicates that they are part of the works of the notoriously insane goblin wizard Xerex. Now a cipher to decode the rest of the writings must exist and is probably located in the same place that these documents were acquired from. So my request is simple. Return to the site where you recovered the uh, the documents from the dig site and uh see if you can dig up the cipher thereby we can... <laughs> that was a joke yes it was you're getting the hang of this yeah um i should point out that uh to present the gift without the necessary cipher would be very much like presenting someone with a lovely piece of furniture that has been disassembled and packed into a flat container and failing to give them the necessary instructions with which to put it together. A gift that requires work is really not so much a gift, more an obligation. 
I'm sure there's a place near here that does that. I think I have an, like, an idea of somewhere. <laughs> Possibly one of the cheaper furniture stores, you know, for the, the students at the too. university and such. It's all Swedish to me. Yes. I don't know where that is, but we'll move along. So, uh, it's simple. I need you to return to the dig site that the Dask were clearing out down in Old Shan and recover the cipher. Uh, failure to do so will, of course, be met with painful consequences. I think Any you're questions? lying. Everybody keeps saying things are simple, but they're not simple, are they? They're just... They're just things. My request is simple. Yeah. How you choose to go about it will affect the effort involved. Now, if you'll excuse me, if you don't have any further questions, I have a, a sitting to to concentrate on. Just looks over at you, just... No? Very good. On your way, just reclines back into the chair and just continues to look at himself so this time we actually have to bring him back alive then well we, we gotta find the our methods last time as you're saying to leaves oh one more thing um yes. <laughs> usually these ciphers are in the form of a, a scroll or a parchment or a, a journal um understandably given the age of the documents it may be impossible to transfer the entire manuscript uh, make use of this. He holds up a uh, silver, sort of uh, red, sort of teardropped, teardrop-shaped crystal, and just sort of languidly like holds it out, expecting one of you to take it. I will go okay. to take it. Okay. Okay. And this um, is Callus keeps looking at it. So Callus and no, it, to, to be fair, all of you would recognise this. This is a uh, spell shard. And it is effectively a arcane dictaphone, I guess. You can use it to record information on. Um, you've seen it used downwards. around. Yes, yeah, you've seen it used around the city. It's not an uncommon um, sort of piece of magic hardware. Um, it just tends to be preferable to carry something like that around rather than a big stack of books. Okay. Um, but Callus and Nottard, you would be more familiar with the, the use of it and using it to extract information and store it. Okay. So like a, a magic performance, mana points, uh, memory preservation player, also known yes. as an M3 player. Yes, yeah, it can hold like if you if you were to take it along to some bards performing, you could probably use it to record like one or two of their gigs, but not much more than that. That's fair. It's got about two <laughs> two two gig, maybe three gig limits on it. It's canon now that it's called MP3 player. Canon. Okay. So. Right. <laughs> so with that. Ta ta. Just continues staring almost lovingly at his own image. Yeah, I, so I just said it was an old Sean, right? Uh, boss, everyone, we did a lot of walking last time. Uh, boss, I didn't, but I'm not in the mood to start. So, taxi, it is. Okay, assuming we can taxi there. <laughs> Uh, yes, yeah. So you can you can sky coach there. Um, probably take about uh, fifteen minutes sky coach ride. So uh, standard going rate for that would be about six silver. Worth it. I'll pay it. Okay. So you flag down a sky coach um, outside the painter studio. You can see that there is like there is a, a sort of like a holding pattern of sky coaches like queued up, and then just every so often one will sort of dip down, pick up passengers, and take off and then the rest of the line will just shunt across you hop on board and uh, you make your way down to old Sean and the uh, uh, the sort of familiar smells start coming back um, you 
find your way to the uh, concealed elevator that you took down last time, hidden um, a district across from the um, very fancy unicorn estate. Manipulating the control panel, you feel the thunk as the elevator starts moving and the grinding of metal on metal as it starts to make its way down. And it's that, that same sensation of almost taking forever to get down to the bottom. And eventually there is a thud. And you find yourself um, back at the dig site. The doors open and illuminate the cavern in front of you. You can see the same um, piles of rubble, the little shack at the far end. Um, where you found um, the House Orion... Um, son kept prisoner um yeah what do you want to do yeah, so we're, we're back in the original place where we found so you're back in the dig site yes yeah so i'm trying to remember how big this place is because we only we only went a very short distance in didn't we you did so. There's there's a, a decent, um, decent sized uh, cavern in front of you, maybe sort of fifty to hundred feet across. Um, the light from the sort of one sort of central point in the top of the elevator sort of spills out into the space in front. And you can see like the outline of the the shack at the far side, but uh, the light sort of dims beyond that. Um, I see. I can't approach see the shack. Yeah. So it's in exactly the uh, the same condition as you left it. The um, coals in the um, fire have, have long since gone cold. There's still scattered papers of sort of half burnt across Can the floor. Search said papers and see if there's anything interested. Uh, yeah. For. Make me an let's just cause a straight investigation check, please. Right here. That well, there is a nat twenty, so twenty one. Perfect. Well um, good, good yeah, opening roll. Start, yeah. yeah. Um it turns <laughs> out that as <laughs> as you're looking around you find that um the way that the door is open has let a shaft of light come in and illuminate just one strip of a map on the wall that just says you are here with a big red pin. And then there is a tunnel that appears to move away from the elevator shaft. And then there's like a cross at the end of the tunnel um, with a note that just says, Big Door looks sus. <laughs> we'll relay to the others what I've seen. Okay. Uh, down the elevator. Light my hooded oh. lantern so we can see. Yeah, I was just going to do the same. Oh, if you've done it, I'm not going to bother. Well, the whole point of a <laughs> hooded lantern, though, is I can cover it if we have to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's so... head towards the big suspicious door. Okay, sorry, no, Ted, what were you saying? Uh, Just that we should go into the elevator. And then I started singing Love, is an, love in an Elevator. That's fine. We already came Is out it the the... I thought we were out at the top of the elevator. No, no we're we're down come down. down. Well, I'll take another loop round and then. You're just going to know for another right. Okay, so the yeah. rest of you wait there for another sort of 15 minutes while no take just goes like, this that was nice. fun. <laughs> Bing! And just takes the elevator back up to the surface. And you hear the rumblings. He comes back down again and hops out. Big smile just goes, that was great. I love that. <laughs> Never gets old. So you follow the uh, directions yes. on the map and it eventually brings you down a tunnel that's starting to... the, the, the walls are starting to, to encroach in. And at the end of the tunnel you find this big circular stone door and etched into the surface, uh, dead centre, is a relief of a uh, bugbear face. And as you draw closer and the light catches the um, stone features, the face begins to move and shift with this very rough, 
grinding noise and starts to speak and just says, Welcome, children of Dakan, rightful heirs to the world above, conquerors of the dark below, noble warriors of the clans of... Oh, who are you? And immediately Hi. looks perplexed. I'm Hello? Mike. I'm Mike. Hello, Mike. Yeah, that's me. What? How are you? That's what we say. That's what we say, right? That's right? correct, Mike. Yes. I am a door. Yeah. Who are you? Uh, uh, you? You don't have much of a mem. I'm Mike. Hello, Mike. Can we, can we, can we get in? Uh, are you sure? I was... Pretty sure. We do want to go in. Yeah, I, be I believe so. Do Why you... wouldn't we want Guys, to go in? Anybody, anybody not wanting Ask to go in? Well... I w why why can't you're we go not, in? you're not goblins, so you, you may not be aware. I'm a gnome. I'm a gnome. <laughs> Racist. Okay. I don't know how close that is to goblins, but you're not goblin-looking. You feel you're like you're small, being mean based, based on get... our race. You know that's not really allowed these days. Things in Sharn have changed recently. They may well have, but I was built to serve as a gatekeeper. Right, but there's a difference between gatekeeping and segregation. Did yeah. you know that? I read that. I read that. <laughs> okay, so I'm... Not sure feel, where you're I going feel, with this. I, but, I feel the like big you issues need to let us through because otherwise we're going to have bigger issues at hand than your personal opinions uh, on okay. what we look like. Okay, so from from my point of view, you're not goblins, so you may not be familiar with what's behind me. I well, felt no, it was probably I just feel... prudent to to let you know. I feel you're being more than just a closed door, though. I feel you're being a little close-minded as well. Okay, <laughs> all right. If you if you want to go yeah, in, man. that's fine. <clears throat> Behind oh, me thought... lies yeah. Xerex the Wise's personal chambers, guarded by some of his most ingenious traps. No one has been through here in over a hundred years. So they might be dead. Is that what you're saying? Probably dead. Or no longer in there. I don't know. I'm just the entrance. I know. But it's... it's. Mm. No, do you know what? I'm not going to stoop to your level. Can we get through, please? Please yourself. And it just sort of rolls into the wall out of the way. That was confusing. <laughs> Let's that go. Maybe the That's longest we... instance of race yeah. carding a door I've heard of. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as we approach... The only I'll, entry I'll card we had. Shine the lantern into the room and see if I can spot any traps. Okay. Yeah, um, go ahead. Uh, another, that's going to be another... Uh, it's a, another investigations check. I'd say, I'd say with advantage because you're... You're, you're uh, kind of keen to what a trap would look like. Okay, the advantage of 16. Okay. As you look through, uh, nothing more substantial than potentially some, like, rough pebbles appear in there. And as you shine the, tor the lantern down the, the tunnel, you can see that it just disappears into darkness, but there is a bright spot just beyond the cast of the, the lantern. I can't see any physical traps, guys. Doesn't mean there's not anything of the uh, magical variety. Uh, either yeah. I can't tell that. I don't have detect magic. Oh, if only one I of us had detect magic. Do. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I was just checking whether I actually do. So I am casting detect magic. Okay. As ritual. Uh, um. How can I put this? It's there isn't any. kind of like you've turned on a night vision set of goggles in broad daylight. Of course. 
everywhere. This place is lousy with magic. It is like a crime scene blacklight of magic. <laughs> there is just, just it's like the entire thing was built just using magic alone. There is just there's residual traces, there's stronger traces. Nothing stands out at you as being openly hostile. This all appears to be just sort of like the the sort of leftover residue from magic having Radiation. been used, but it is it is like strong background levels everywhere. Oh, I feel a tingle. I'll uh, start to walk forward like into the room. Eyes. Okay. Uh, no, oh, sir. What are you up to whilst the jammering and looking? I'll just power ahead, to be honest. Blindly. Okay. And Mikey? Uh, I'm going to throw out a mage hand and swipe it along the right hand wall. Okay. As far as it will go 30 feet. That's fine. Uh, it swipes along the wall. It knocks a bit of dust loose. Nothing nothing untoward. Okay. Okay. As the last of you comes through the door, the stone rolls back into place, just with a dull thud that echoes down the hallway. And as you carry on making your way through this very long, low tunnel, um, it starts to, as you approach the sort of point of light directly ahead, it starts to open up into a wide cavern. And directly ahead of you, at the you know a few feet ahead of the opening, is a, a small jetty on the edge of an underground lake. It's illuminated by burning torches. There's a sort of two of them set up on either side. Um, the entire room just smells of like stagnant water and there's a steady the only noises you can really hear is just the steady drip of water from the stalactites above and the, the water just lapping up against the surrounding rock surfaces tied up to the jetty and just bobbing gently up and down in the water are two canoes with three seats in each and both of them have got paddles lying inside of them and do the wings hold them? I beg your pardon? The wings. Do the toucan's wings hold the paddles? Two canoes. Two can A canoe as a boat, but two right. of them. Right. There we go. Right. Missed uh. that one. <laughs> <laughs> So we get in the canoes. I was waiting for more toucan jokes. No, there's there's no further toucan jokes. I check the. Uh, uh, that was more of a one can joke than a toucan yeah. joke. Uh, oh. it's, it's, uh, just, it's just can farming you... for it. Two two people per boat. Yep. Seems I'm not going with Mike because I can't deal with more toucan jokes. I'll go with Mike because he can do all the rowing. Oh, thank God. Excuse you. And I'm I thrust, only Lil. I thrust the paddle into his hands. Okay. So who's getting in first? I think uh, Mike should get in first, otherwise I'm going to go flying when he gets in. Yeah. <laughs> Do I they am just look heavier. like canoes? <laughs> as in the thing sketchy about them. Yeah, they just they look you, like canoes. You I'm still I'd, as, as in not trapped, like kind Pocahontas of thing. type. Imagine like yeah, canoes. they're like sort of you know Amer American style canoes where they've got this sort of the upturn at the front. Not like they're not like kayaks where they sort of taper into points. Step into the canoe. Up. Does that mean does that mean that we're just headed around the river bend? Just around the river bend. Yeah, yeah. Just, just around the river bend. Um, yes. So. The moment that your feet touch the inside of the canoe, there is a sudden drum beat that echoes through the cavern mm -hmm. and then stops. Mm -hmm. And as you lower the rest of your body into the boat, the beat comes again, but more rhythmic and more driving this time. And it starts to build and build to this crescendo. And as it does, 
pairs of torches flare into life, leading down into the cavern away from the jetty. And this rising, screeching wind starts howling through the cavern, and dust and pebbles and lake spray are blown towards you. You have to turn your eyes away from the gale. And as it dies down and the drumbeat starts to steady, you're back out over the lake. And hovering just ahead of the jetty is a glowing figure of a goblin standing in a leopard print coat that falls just down Hmm. to their feet, wearing a bright orange shirt rising to a a scarlet neck scarf, a pair of very tight-fitting trousers (coughs) dropping into some knee-high riding boots. He's pimping. And they've got sharp ears and nose striking out from beneath this completely smooth, hairless head. With a diamond earring just glinting. What a fucking baller. And they don't so much look at you, but just kind of the space where you should be standing on the jetty. And just goes, Oh, hi! Reckless Xerix, the riveting raconteur here. Put out the fire and throw another log on the cat as you prepare to face the awesome menace that is my maze of crystal shards. Oh my god. You intrepid adventurers will engage in a fearsome struggle against the forces of fate. Now, if you're lucky, very, very lucky, you may win the required five crystal shards secured in the trials beyond. These will allow you a once in a lifetime visit to meet me, Xerix the Amazing, in my private quarters, your supreme reward. So, who are these noble souls ready to throw themselves against the perils of the maze? First up, Callus Lanik. He is a 20-year-old and a student from Shan Polytechnic. Mike Your Bedrock, 34, and a chartered accountant from Droham. Mick Dagger, 21, and he's a singing telegram from Breland. And finally, Nota Dwarf De Civis, 25 years old and an insurance underwriter from the Talenta Plains, and our team captain. Yes, oh, these God. are they, all togged up and ready to go. There's no turning back now. From the moment I blow this whistle, once you go inside the maze, you're going to go through it like a dose of dragon's blood through a jittery halfling, aren't you? But first, yes. <laughs> you have to get into this maze. So when I blow this whistle, you're going to jump into the boats and head upstream. Ready? Go! And there's this sharp blast of the whistle. Echoes yes. through the caves as this image of the goblin just dissipates into mist and the drum beat starts picking up again in a much more energetic and kind of fervent looping rhythm. Uh, do we go on the first whistle or the second whistle? <laughs> <laughs> you will go. <laughs> I think that's Let a I think that's a different dungeon. <laughs> ah damn. <laughs> Let me guess, there'll be tasks to do in a certain time frame and if you don't do it within that time frame then you'll be out of the game and you won't be able to carry on until the last round. The image, the image swirls back into place and goes, Come on, come on! Let's get a move on! Right, I'm in the boat. I was already stepping into the boat, so I'm sat there. Oh, I've been in the boat this entire time, wondering yeah. what a chartered accountant even is. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, okay. I'm just going to hop into the boat with me. No, 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 genuinely, not just Mike. <laughs> I have no idea. Okay, um, so can I get everyone to make a strength check, please? Yeah. Uh, with acrobatics, if you have proficiency. Oh, okay. I don't. Oh, uh, that's uh, another nat 20, so 24. Oh, not bad. 24. Yeah, bad, cool. yeah. I like this dice, I'm I keeping it. I know if this is going to go well. <laughs> oh, I have That's a either. four. <laughs> oh, me too, which makes my Fortunately, I'm in the boat with Mick, so hopefully he'll drag my ass through this. Okay, so yeah. Uh, as... That's a nine for me. Okay. <laughs> I'm like a cat like rogue. So, <laughs> Mick and Callus, your your canoe makes it to the uh, through the, the cavern first, and as you arrive, you basically pull up to the dock of a castle. And as you look up, you can see like open sky above you, and you look behind, and there's just like this sort of tunnel entrance that you've emerged from. And uh, Mikeo and Nightad, as you arrive, same scene. You're in like a, a castle courtyard, and there's hay over the floor. There's a, a fairly rough and ready-looking oak table set up in the center, and just on a stool next to it sort of one foot up in this very sort of 
dashing, swashbucklingy kind of pose is the what? goblin uh, oh. Xerx. Um, what you also see is a small apple crate just next to the stall to account for the height difference. You know, so welcome completed. to the castle zone. This castle has been in my family for centuries and, well, I've got a few games in here. So who's going to be our first challenger? Well, oh, oh! Captain, I will oh. nominate Mike. Oh, yeah! Very keen. Very well, Captain. Mike, follow me. And the ghost one drifts over, grabs you by the hand, and with a force you weren't expecting from a ghost, quite bodily pulls you across the courtyard to a door set into one of the walls. He goes, okay. Your challenge here is to retrieve the crystal shard from the heart of the Guardian. You have some time to do it, and if you don't, you will be thrown into the drowning pool. Oh. Is that where the bodies hit the floor? Yes, we had to remove <laughs> most of the water. I don't think it was long. <laughs> Beat me to it. It was getting difficult to fish everyone out, so we just took all the water out, let the bodies hit the floor, and then just scoop them out afterwards. Anyway, in you go, opens the door and pushes you through. As he does, turns to the rest of you. Now, the rest of you can watch through the windows we've got set up in the side here. So, Mike, inside, yes. you have a well-lit room. Um, <laughs> very, very high ceiling. And as you look up, you can see that there is a rope hanging down with a key on it. Directly below that is a sort of seesaw arrangement. And on the far side is um, what you would think is like a sort of battle specification warforged. It kind of looks like just a, a suit of armour, but you can see that there's like rigging and joints between the different plates. And set into the chest, you can see is a lock. Right. Hmm. Okay, so I'm going to use one of my features then. Yep. Uh, and that would be Tempestuous Magic. Okay. Which allows me to fly up to 10 feet without provoking any opportunity attack. So I fly up and I grab the key off the rope. Can you just roll me a... What's your spell casting? Is it Charisma? Uh, charisma, yes. Uh, yeah, if you can make me a charisma saving throw, please. Sure. Oh, no. Seven. Seven. Okay. And can you also please roll for me? Eight. Yes. As I consult this book that I totally had prepared ahead of time. didn't prepare ahead of time. There we go. So, um, can you roll me, please, a d100? Oh. 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 D20, d100. Roll. 48. 48. Um... As you feel the wind start to billow around you, um, you feel a sort of slight rise and then fall as you feel the energy sort of move across the room and swirls into the form of a unicorn. Are we finally getting unicorns in D and D? Yeah. Oh, oh God, is it happening? Oh, oh, head, oh yeah, this head is scream in a few moments. <laughs> this is like this is a, a straight up unicorn that's just standing there looking very confused, just like. Oh, hi. Can you, with the key, help me? I couldn't fly. <laughs> <laughs> just sort of wanders over towards the uh, the seesaw and starts like tapping the near ah. side of it with a hoof. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, one second. And I, I run to the other side and I go, okay. And 
Go. Can you make me a strength saving throw, please? Oh, for <laughs> fuck's sake. Oh, you die is... instantly. <laughs> you get skewered <laughs> on the unicorn's horn. That's a yeah. zero. That's a zero. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the unicorn, like, rears up and stamps down both hooves on the side of the seesaw. And right. it just launches you across the room. Like, you just go off at an angle, miss the key completely, and just batter yourself into a wall. Okay. Um, Beautiful. It's quite high yeah. as well. Uh, you take four points of bludgeoning damage from the fall. Oh. Cool. Yes. Ow. That went swimmingly. Good job I can't get concussion. Haha. <laughs> Joke's on you. <laughs> Do it again. Joke's on you as I insert my eye back into the socket. Um, <laughs> The unicorn's kind of looking like a little bit embarrassed at this point. Ah, uh, I use mage hand to grab to grab the key. Okay. Um, the mage hand that grips around it, and as it as it pulls, you feel like the resistance against the rope. The mage hand just isn't strong enough to pull that key free. Okay. All right. All right. I'm like. So I guide the unicorn onto the seesaw and I go, ready? And then I launch the unicorn up to get the key. Oh, no. Should a unicorn way? Unicorn dies. <laughs> he's Googling all oh, the horse ways now, isn't he? Pegasus, isn't it? No, uh, he's rolling dice, which is worse. Uh, the unicorn makes a, a, a beautiful displacement of force. It just, le it just goes straight up. And the loop for the key starts directly over yeah. its horn. Yeah. <laughs> and then it drops back down, just ever so gracefully, landing on the floor, the key just sort of spinning on the horn, looking very proud of itself. I take the key I take the key off the horn and I, I pat and I pet the I pet the unicorn before going to the lock and unlocking it. Okay, so as you go up to the uh, the guardian, the key goes in, yep. Yep. turns, and it opens, and inside the guardian's chest cavity, there is about the size, slightly larger than a golf ball, slightly smaller than a baseball, is a clear white crystal. Cool. I nav it. Excellent. I grab it, I grab it, and I go, is this what you're looking for, Mr. Goblin Ghost, sir? Yes, yes, bring it out. Well done. Congratulations. Oh, uh, and I, I take the unicorn with me. Okay. So yeah. as you guide the unicorn towards the um, door, there is a faint whinny as it just disperses back into mist as it oh. makes its way through the door. It's not a pained whinny. It's just like a good luck. See ya. That sort of I'm free. I had a unicorn though. Mr. Me sees a unicorn. Ah. Yeah. Uh, at this point, Xerix looks at you and goes, Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. We have one crystal shard. Well, that's the end of our time here in the Can castle. Can I try it for the unicorn? Can I have the unicorn back? <laughs> that's not how that works. I don't even know how the unicorn got there. I certainly didn't put it in. Did you? Maybe. <laughs> Wonderful. Anyway, come on, team. Let's head on to the next zone. It's a big sweeping arm motion. Starts just running off down a pathway further into the castle. Yep. I follow cautiously behind. And I just okay. say to Mick, I can already tell I'm going to hate this. I love it already. Okay. I just... <laughs> so as you're making I walk, way... I walk behind with my head down, just like following the group. Are you sad about the unicorn now? Yeah, I'm devastated. <laughs> okay. So... That's dev. It's all right. I've made a note. Um, <laughs> so as you make your way down the, the corridor, you follow this goblin ghost through 
so little side passages and the the walls get a little bit tighter and start to open up and as you're moving through you'd notice that the the wall has gone from this sort of like solid brick construction it's becoming this sort of more um natural almost coral like shape and as you continue moving through uh you come to uh, basically just like an open beach beautiful crystal clear water blue skies and these enormous like coral structures jutting up out of the water in turquoises and yellows and pinks seagulls wheeling overhead and arranged around the sort of the sort of sea wall of this cove again you can see these little doors set in with windows on either side uh, wonderful so welcome to the coral zone now we have one crystal shard already so that's one of the locks opened for when we get to our final room so who is going to take challenge number two i think for number two uh callus seems like he could swim sure. and i feel like this might be water based so <laughs> you'd think callus come with me my boy and he um. grabs <laughs> floats over, grabs you by the hand, and just bodily hoiks you towards one of the doors. Oh, you think you're good in water? I didn't hear a word of that. I said humans can swim. Also, part feline, <laughs> not a fan of water. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, <laughs> yeah she gets mixed. <laughs> yeah, just. A... <laughs> I mean, and Mike's already done just one, like but he'd also. Mike's electrics were short, so... Yeah. Ha <laughs> ha It's true. So, Xerix anyway. leads you up to one of the doors and goes, Okay, now this little challenge we like to call Till Death Do Us Part. In you go, or it's the drowning pool for you! And just throws you through the door, closes it behind you, turns to the rest of the team and goes, You can watch through the windows if you like. And just always... Toddles over to a rock and hops out and just starts blasting away on a harmonica. That's easy. Okay, what's what, in this room? Okay. What songs he blasting out on the harmonica? Sorry. It's just no, no tune that you recognise. Just it's just a series of high Definitely energy improvements. Full on dudes. <laughs> Full on <laughs> victorious what, dudes. What so callous. <clears throat> do, 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 do. Uh, do, 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 do. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> Watching you. I'm watching you this time. We've got cameras. Uh, so it was honky. Callus, as you um, enter this room, um, you see what appears to be a romantic meal for two. There is a table set up in the middle with a, a cloth on, a little serving dish, chairs either side, candles. Around the outside of the room, there's like trellis with vines growing up nice. it. Classy. And on the far side of the room um, you can see that there is a uh, the, a pair of statues of uh, two elves in sort of very close embrace and where their hands meet in the middle you can see um, another one of the crystal shards in like a, a metal cage. And it looks like the two statues they're holding sort of half the cage each and you can see a seam runs down the center spite of all your rage it is still just a shard in a cage oh just yeah. have your inspiration and get out <laughs> <laughs> you're googling all the songs no <laughs> oh dear yes got it I hope my oh. courage is better than me being actually <laughs> terrible <laughs> all i can see is these two elves holding the bell cage and the romantic setup uh yeah um also in there you've got um there's like a sort of <clears throat> there's a, a side table set up with like serving dishes and bits and pieces on the other side there is a um a full-size harp that's just sort of gently Plinking away. Um, and 
hanging on the trellises there are there's a, a couple of paintings dotted around what's on the paintings um paintings mainly appear to be uh, sort of other impressions of this elven couple and you can see them it's all um they're like really coupley paintings there's like uh one of there's like the two of them just holding hands and like standing so that their silhouettes form a heart at a sunset um there's like the two of them lying down in a, a hay field um there's one of them where they're just sort of laughing at a small dog that's like rolled onto its back and its tongue's hanging out um oh. there's this they're like as you look I at them, they are... the most likely one okay um <laughs> just because five bucks a cantrip yes Yes. Cool. Yes, and what is your spell casting modifier? What is your spell uh, casting stat? Uh, sorry. It's intelligence for you, isn't it? With, uh, intelligence, yes. Can you make me an intelligence saving throw, please? Oh, no. Uh, that's, that's not too bad. Uh, 19. 19. Okay. Roll a d100, please. Oh. Do I have a d? Oh, I'll just do a d100. Is it D100? What is it D100? Is that the one where you, you get super duper Maggie? Get... That one. Percentile, yeah, get... yeah, it's two of those. Uh, you roll that and then you roll the other that? one. And then you add the numbers together to get. Bear with me, it's super laggy. Uh, 21. 21. 21. This one. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I've got one somewhere. <clears throat> uh, No real effect for you. Um, The rest of you feel this sort of pulse come out of the chamber and Zerek sort of stops playing the harmonica and looks at me and goes probably shouldn't try magic in the chambers they're quite responsive and goes back to playing the harmonica we're just trying to get the unicorn back. shout through the Wait, window respond. to Callus. I think it's an eating challenge yeah I was going to sit at the table <laughs> I just wanted to burn those horrible <laughs> pictures so I'm going to sit at the table and okay. hopefully try what Notad is suggesting. Eat whatever is there. Okay. Um, so the serving tray in the centre, um, as you open it up, you can certainly try and eat what's under there, oh, but no. it's a pack of playing cards... <laughs> and a dead raven. No, Ted would like not not prepared in any way. This is this is very clearly the animal as was in life. Now life departed. Is it Cheryl Crow? It's not. No. Is it Raven? It... Oh, what a fuck! What's her name? Is that a name? Oh, it's <laughs> so <laughs> Raven. Oh, oh. <laughs> Raven. A dead raven and a deck of cards in yep. a serving tray. We could have been dealt a better hand if nothing else. <laughs> I just, just, just. <laughs> doesn't get any better. <laughs> just why? You've why? had your inspiration. Why are you, do, why are you doing Stop. this? You, you already have the inspiration. <laughs> why you do this? Why you do this? Um. Shuffle the cards? Yeah, is it just a standard deck of cards? I feel like I'm being proper dense. Here. Make me an investigation check. Play 52 card pickup. Uh, That's my favourite game. Mm. Uh, it's a classic. 12. Okay. Um, yeah, standard deck of cards. Um, you do notice that the um, suits are slightly different. So rather than just being sort of standard numbered with shapes, the four suits that you've got are um, pictures of drow, um, pictures of elves, pictures of um, aracocra, and pictures of dwarves. Okay. 
So these statues have got baskets on them. So the two statues, it's it's they're two just elf the figures, cage. and they're sort of they're they've got their arms around each other, but the the arms sort of furthest out from the body are sort of holding this cage together with the crystal shard in it. Right. Bird needs to go in the cage. Yeah, death part. And of how the, the hell did he get in there? Of the cards, I feel like the dwarf and what was the other one? Arakokra, dwarf, drow, elf. I think Alf and Arakokra is going to be the ones that you need. I'm just going purely based off elves and birds. <laughs> Do the pictures of any of these like pictures on the wall like give you any sort of clue? They're just sickly romantic pictures, aren't they? What were the um, races of the elves? Oh, we're back to race again. <laughs> They're both just elves. At this point, uh, Zerek sort of peeks the head in and just goes, Better hurry up! And, Thank you. Uh, as he says that, the harp stops playing the sort of romantic music and starts playing a more funereal dirge. And just... you can see that the the statues have now started crying. Oh no. And where the tears are hitting the floor, there's this faint sort of pss. Uh oh. I know that sound. The floor is lava. I've heard that sound before. It's acid. Xerix looks at you and goes, It is acid! Isn't it fun? Usually, but not when we have someone there. I mean, don't worry. You're, you're perfectly fine. That door is entirely oh. sealed. It can't get oh. out. I mean, Try it'll fill the room. The We're fine, but you are in danger. Try opening Excellent. the cage to see what happens. Yeah, I'm going to put the bird on the cage. Just on the top of the cage Stop while I in. try and open it. <laughs> Jam it in. It, it, I take it it won't fit in the cage. Or you will can, it fit you can make it try and fit if you really want. Oh god. Sure. Cool. Uh, let's give you a straight strength check to ram a third into the cage the wrong way. I feel like I am terrible at these. That is a five. Oh god. It's just the head. Yeah, after like a couple of moments of, of panic and trying to avoid getting acid tears on your hand, you've just sort of mashed bird paste and feather into the, the side of the cage. There's just like gibbets and offal and you can see it sort of dripping down onto the crystal inside. At this point Xerex just pipes up with What were the races on the playing cards? Aracocra, Alf, Drow and Dwarf. Drow, Alf, Aracocra and Dwarf. Spells dead. Dead. Yeah, I was just reading it. Mm. It was a crow. Where else in the room might you find those letters? Um. In the room, would I find those letters? Bead. Death, there was part. Was Bed. That written somewhere. Yes, it is. Uh, What's on the paintings? Oh. What is on the paintings? Paint. <laughs> Or so the pictures of different races. You look at the paintings, and again, it's like the the sickly sunset shots, the shot of them in the the hayfield, and the uh, picture of them with a dog just lying there, just lolling its tongue out. Oh, they're dead! Oh God! Wait, is the dog dead? Sunset. What was the middle one? The middle one is just the two of them lying down in like a, a field. Sunset field dog. Um, as you look, if you look closely at the the picture with the dog, it doesn't appear to be dead. It's like it's sort of, it's just it's just Tucking messing around. Of bullshit. I'm the improper dancer. This right? at this point, Zerek's kind of just pacing up and down as best a ghost can. He goes, "What is the dog doing?" Playing Not dead. Yes, yeah, so what should you do? Oh, play dead. 
Oh, oh try playing dead. Okay, uh, make me a, a performance check, please. Oh, I'll cry. Funnily enough, I do not have that. That would be a six. Okay, so you just lie down on the floor, and like whilst you're trying to play dead, you realise you've laid just a little bit too close to this growing pool of acid and have to sort of shuffle away <laughs> from it. <laughs> Um, I was going to go with maybe happens. you should like, play the cards so they spell D dead. Oh. Yeah. As in arrange the suits, like solitaire style. Drow, elf. Yeah, drow, elf. yeah arrange Aracocra. it in drow, elf, aracocra and dwarf. Okay. Um, dwarf. Slight, slight of hand check just to see how, how oh, quickly... Please. You do this. It's going to be a relatively low difficulty. I've got to be honest. He has not it's done really just to see how quickly and how much you sort of fumble in the panic as the room starts to Ten. fill with acid. Ten. No wait. Twelve. Twelve. Okay. Um, yeah. Fortunately, you hadn't shuffled them too much. So it's quite easy to sort of arrange them onto the table. Drow, elf, Arakoqua, dwarf. And at this point, you can see that the pool of acid is starting to creep out from the back of the half. It's starting to pick up. It's starting to get a much more intense, darker uh -oh. tone to it. Dun, 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 I was waiting dun, for someone dun, to hum that. Dun, 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 still, still nothing happens. At this point, Zerex is like, how else? Dun, dun, could no. you play dead? So you've tried actually playing dead. You've tried spelling it out with cards. Where else do the letters D, E, A and D appear in that room? And how else could one play those letters? Try the oh, heart! Oh. Yep. oh my god! Da -da 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 da 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 Play D, E, A, and D. Okay. If I could, if I even know what the hell that is on a harp. I'd say, given your upbringing, whilst you're not, whilst you couldn't play the harp, you could certainly pluck those three notes. And as you do, uh, the statues stop crying, and they start to pull apart. And there's just the crystal covered in bird gobbets. Hovering Excellent. in the center of the cage. I will bring the bird. I will mage hand grab that. Okay. Go near the acid. That's fine. So, <laughs> I just spotted chat. Chat, chat is furious. <laughs> what? So, us? Or... Yep. No. Oh, it, it's always us. Why are you so surprised? <laughs> okay. So as you retrieve the crystal, Xerox goes, Wonderful! That barely took you any time at all, and you didn't nearly die. Congratulations. Well, I think that just about does it for the Coral Zone. Shall we move on to our next exciting adventure? Yes. Follow me, then! And he just legs it off up the beach as the drums start playing again. Can you hear the drums, Fernando? I don't know, make me a perception check. <gasps> can you hear me, Fandango? Yes, I can hear yes, you. Yes, I can hear you, Clampa. You've made up name. <laughs> uh, I got... Wait for it. Don't Wait for it. Almost. 17. 17. Yes, you can hear the drums. Yeah. I thought that was the... Uh... The life and times of a 17. Wait for it. No. Stop. <laughs> anyway. As you follow Xerax uh, along the beach, they bomb it up just between uh, a cleft in the uh, rocks and start diving through. There's very heavy undergrowth. There's big palm fronds overgrowing and roots and stuff and he's just there just just with a machete just hacking away at stuff going follow me adventurers this way to the temple zone 
And as he cuts a path through this undergrowth for you, you finally come out at this sort of huge open temple space. There's these big sort of stepped like ziggurat um, shapes and again set into the walls all around this space are these little doors with the the viewing windows um noted not only can you still hear the drums you've also spotted that for some reason clod is here with a broom just <gasps> sweeping up in the oh, temple grounds uh? why are you here <laughs> just holds the broom up at you Always sweeping Great. to do somewhere. Great chat, as always, Claude. Just carries on sweeping. I'll wave at him. Uh, <laughs> Mick, are you particularly... Temple-y. Yeah? <laughs> Religious? <laughs> Not particularly. I've got a bit of a religiousness, kind of. So, you team what? captain... Who's taking on this challenge? I'm going to do this one. Wonderful! Team Captain stepping up. Follow me. Grabs you by the hand, hoiks you across the temple grounds, up a flight of stairs, to the door. And he just goes, you're familiar with weapons, right? Yeah. Good! And just throws you in through the door, slams oh. it behind you. Rest of the team... Take your positions at the viewing windows. Right, what we got? <clears throat> so, as you come into the room, you can see in front of you, um, sort of going lengthways, it's quite a long space, and going directly down the centre of the room, you can see a rack with six swords on it. And down either side of the room are three paintings on either side as you look down as from your point of view the left hand side of the room there is a uh, dragon there's a beholder and there's a displacer beast which is if you've not encountered them before they kind of look like panthers but with big tentacles coming up over their backs and as you look down the right hand side of the room there is a mimic so a treasure chest with some gnashing snarly teeth um, an owl bear and a uh, gelatinous cube eating a soldier trapped in a dungeon somewhere. <laughs> At the far end of the rack of swords, you can see another cage similar to the one that um, Callus attempted to post a bird through with the crystal just hovering what? in the centre. Anything else? Just it's literally just weapons, and what are the six weapons? So the six weapons are six um, identical swords. Oh, I pick up a sword. Okay. As you do, you just hear this sort of angelic, and the sword glows, <laughs> and along the blade it says, "Patience." Point of ours, fuck. But I think all the, the beasts he said before. Yeah, uh, well, I can't think of anything that would relate to patience. I've got a dragon, beholder, displacer beast, beast. Sure? Yep. mimic, owlbear, and gelatinous cube. I'll pick up a second sword, please. Okay. Pick up the second sword again. There's the. And along, along the blade, it just says justice justice and patience they're both virtues I yeah i was just thinking ones. that put them down and can i do can i pick up all the swords one at a time um yep so as you make your way through the rest of the swords the next one you pick up um there's the angelic note and it says courage the fourth one says faith 
the fifth one says beauty, and the sixth one says hope. Okay. On these paintings, is there anything? Is it just the thing, or is there a background? Any sort of signature? If there was some sort of um, like index tome or manual for these monsters, it would appear that this is like the illustration that they would use to demonstrate what those monsters would look like in said manual. So generally each of the pictures depicts like the, the full scale of the creature that's on there. And it's usually in a sort of um, either dramatic or kind of action pose kind of going on like the dragon is sort of rearing up and breathing fire um the beholder is just sort of chasing so like staring directly at you and it's just got eye beams going off the displacer beast is sort of turning around and giving a kind of over the shoulder snarl the mimic is just a very angry looking chest the owlbear is kind of almost drawn like a almost like a nature documentary has has commissioned this and the gelatinous cube, it's just a picture of a, a cube dissolving an unwary footman in a dungeon somewhere. There's nothing else in the room other than this and the swords. That's it. You've got the six swords, the six paintings, and the um, cage was... with the cage with the crystal in. The six swords, the six paintings. Yeah. But um, where goes where? Yeah, exactly. I can't really see which ones would match. I mean, our bears are pretty rapey, but we don't have a sort of rape. Only in very specific circumstances involving elf wizards. This is true. Um, oh, okay. Beauty. Sword. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm going to stab the mimic. Be Okay. Beauty. Well, I was just thinking beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Shit, yeah, so okay. as you stab the mimic, <laughs> that baby. the sword almost just flies back and the painting starts to shimmer and the mimic starts to sort of move and you see this mouth kind of like undulating across the surface of this animate chest and a big leathery tongue just sort of whips out and it starts moving towards the front of the painting. Oh, Christ. Oh, shit. Nice. Oh, I'm trying to remember all the damn swords now. Uh, patience, justice, courage, faith, beauty, and oh. hope. Right, beauty to beholder, then. Okay. I may be complete wrong, but well, that was, that's my first thought anything. when I heard beauty. Make sure you jab it in the eye with it, and then it'll be fine. Your sorceress, so your spellcasting trait is charisma, yes? You're a warlock, sorry. Uh, yes. Okay. Can you make me a charisma saving throw, please? Just just going with, you know, the old favourite of... Seven. Seven. Can you roll a d100, uh, please? You die instantly. You explode. You cast, you cast fireball on yourself. <laughs> yeah. One. One. Ninety-one. Ninety-one. Okay. That's different. <laughs> um, One would have been amazing. As you stab the sword into the, the painting of the Beholder, there is this screech, and then a blast of energy throws you across the room, and you feel this searing pain through your chest as you realise that you are now pinned to the opposing wall by the remaining swords. Uh. The crystal cage opens and you take sixty two points of piercing damage. What Have I just inadvertently killed M with the wrong finger? How much HP have you got? One. Does that kill you? I, well, I'm downed. Does that one shot you? Yeah. yeah. 
you got 21 health, so you'll be dead. Yeah. Okay, bye! <laughs> what? Well, I, can't, I can't even scroll on my D&D Beyond. Even D&D Beyond is just shut down. Mm. As we, we, your D &D as Beyond. we go to take a break... <laughs> so what? uh we're gonna be back in about 10 minutes to uh to see how this wraps <laughs> up see, see you in 10 can we get the heart back with the funeral dirge please
and we're back. So, those of you currently outside the chamber have just seen this flurry of swords fly ah. into Notad's chest, and as he's pinned against the wall, just limps lifelessly against the side of the chamber. I don't think death would be this funny. <laughs> Xerox is... Shh, you're dead! I Shush. swear he's still breathing. Look! Look! Xerox looks and he goes, Oh, unfortunate. But you still gained a crystal shard if... One of you wants to go and just pick that up. And he opens the door to let you in. Mike? I walk on in. No, no I don't. Can I use Mage Hand? Yeah, I was... Oh, magic work. Oh, sorry. <laughs> You're dead. Dead people can't talk. Shut up. <laughs> dead gnomes give no warnings. Um, yep, certainly. <laughs> um, so you go ahead and you summon the mage hand. It drifts in. Reach in. Pluck out the crystal. Pluck out the crystal. Cool. Um, can you make me a charisma saving throw, please? Oh, I keep forgetting about this fucking thing. Okay. Charisma! Okay, 23. 23. Yeah, Mage Hand just effortlessly floats in. Yeah, buddy! Crystal. <laughs> nice. Comes back out. I don't mind. Uh, making Callus, what are you up to? I'm just staring blankly at the corpse of Notad. Don't I want to go and look and check him, but I'm Try and pick him up and ram just... him into a cage at all, or...? What's the matter? He can be repaired, <laughs> yeah, I'll right? I'll try and cram him into there. He can be <laughs> repaired. Is he right, actually... Right? If I go look, is he actually dead? Uh, make a medicine check. Uh... Do I have... Hey! Wow, trash rolls. Do I just need to get these dice out of here? So Sorry, eight. 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 Um, you're no doctor, but th th there's no pulse. There's also like half a dozen swords sticking out of his chest, impaling him to a wall. Well, not a lot we can do here. Not sad. You open your eyes into a completely black void. And as you look down, you see your body sort of trails off into this sort of like blue spectral mist. You feel no sense of weight, no sensation of direction, no sensation at all. Kind of like a uni student in second year. <laughs> or any year. From behind you, you hear just a polite... <clears throat> Turn around. Every Turn now around. and then. <laughs> <laughs> You've had your inspiration. Stop. <laughs> you're giddy now. As your ghost form just sort of rotates slowly around, you see standing next to like a, a lectern with a little reading lamp over it is a halfling with very nice sort of like well-fitted sort of tweed suit little bowler hat and just uh, look up at you and go <clears throat> uh, name? Uh, Notar Dwarf de Civis Decivis, 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 and starts running a, a quill down a, a clipboard on the, the lectern. Decivis, 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 Decivis. I'm sorry, we don't appear to have a reservation under that name. Um, I didn't expect to die today. Ah, to book ahead. one of those. Well, I'm afraid that we don't have a reservation for you at the moment, um, but uh, um, I'm sure that we could fit you in sometime in the future. Um, until then, I'm afraid we're going to have to return you. 
snaps his fingers. You suddenly breathe this sort of ragged breath as your life returns to your body. The swords just pew, 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 fly out. Um, Callus, can you just make me a quick dexterity saving throw, please? Oh, yes. To avoid being hit by boomeranging swords. Come on, different dice. Nope. Uh, eight. Eight. Oh, is he dead now? I die now, yeah. Uh, you take four points of bludgeoning damage as the pommels of the swords oh. just like collide with your face. <laughs> um, no, Ted, you feel this sudden surge of vital energy. And as you look down, you can see the sort of cuts on your um, robes where the, the swords have pierced through. But as you sort of look through, you can't see any injury or wound on there. It was almost as if you never died. I can feel it. Um, so, you are back to the hit points you had prior to being painfully kebabbed. Um, Mick, can you just make me a perception check, please? Where is my perception? 17. 17. As all this is going on, you've seen that the um, crystal that uh, Mike Yor is sort of bringing back has very very briefly glowed this sort of golden colour and then extinguished. Yeah. Dang it. And so Xerox turns to you and goes, Well, that was... Um, Unusual. Didn't didn't put that in there. Oh well. Never mind. I think we're done here. Are we ready to move on to the next zone? Can't wait. So. Fantastic. So, three challenges down, three crystals. That means there's only two crystals left to get. Let's move along to the next zone. The wasteland. Follow me and the drums pick up again. And he starts hooning it away from the temple. Um, as you do, you run past Claude, who's at this point like swept up quite a lot of the like sticks and sand into a nice neat little pile. Just <laughs> waves you off. And Bye, Claude. <laughs> do you want to come get a crystal for us? <laughs> I think you'd be rather good. You going to stick with the sweeping? Okay. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> <laughs> Carries on, sweeping away. And you basically start running out into an open desert. And the longer you run, the more the, the, the wind starts to pick up. And you hear this howling that is equal parts the wind, equal parts the shrieks of the damned. And you come to stop at a what looks like a ruined settlement again some of the buildings are still standing and they've got like the the doors with little viewing windows in but quite a lot of the others are completely torn down um and just destroyed by the elements and uh xerix looks over to not and goes so fourth challenge who's it gonna be i think that's a one mick jagger wait mick jagger <laughs> Dagger. <laughs> Don't sue. Mick. Not funny. Excellent. Follow me, my lad. Follow me. And grabs you by the hand and hauls you across to one of these doors. And just goes, well, let's okay, see how you. you get on with this one. And just grabs you and just hurls you oh. into the room. Slams the door. Once again, it says, team, you can watch through the, uh, through the windows there and see how our... Uh, our young shifter is getting on. So, so what's in this room? In this room, um, around the outside, the room is completely lit by candles. In the centre is this very ornate fountain. With it's a circular fountain. It's got tears to it. It's water just cascading down. 
and sort of each of the like cardinal points around the um, lower tier of the fountain are these little cherub sculptures just with little tiny bows and arrows and little wings and they're pointing the arrows out away from the the fountain at the top of the fountain you can see again there is a cage with a crystal shard in it do these statues move or anything they fixed um, go ahead and make a strength check if you want to try and move one. Because uh, my bat is amazing. Um, that's ten. Um, yeah, they are pretty... Solid. Pretty solidly on there. So I've just got a room with candles in it and a fountain. With cherubs on. Yeah. I think we need to do a seance. And the crystal is in a cage again at the top, very exactly the same as the other ones. Yep, same sort of cage. It's on top of the uh, on top of the. Fountain. Are the cherubs facing any particular direction? Just out towards. They are, so they're set at equal points around the base of the the fountain on the, the lowest tier. If you imagine it, they're sort of the occupying like the the compass points. Yeah, yeah. On there, they're at ninety degree spacing to each one of each other. And there's the same amount of cherubs as candles? No, there's a lot of candles. Like, there's easily a couple of dozen on each wall. Is there anything else in the room? It's just the fountain with these cherubs on and candles? Yep. I think that was the end. How many candles? Loads. Four. I'd say probably about like 30 or 40 candles around the room. Any are they in a particular like pattern or are they just random? No, completely random. Some of them are in like sconces, some of them are in like little uh, like candelabra stands, some of them are just, you know, a candle on a, a candle holder. All right. I'm going to put okay. out half of them on the one wall. Okay, how are you put them out? Just gonna go up and blow them out. Okay. Maybe, the, the, maybe the fountain's not water. Maybe like light the water or water. Fair enough. Yeah, no. Just want so, to see if anything happens if I put some of the candles out. As you extinguish half the candles down one side of the room, you notice that there is a faint glow coming from the fountain. From the, right. from the bottom tier where the water is starting to pull down, you can see this sort of almost like shimmer coming from it. And similarly, you can see that one of the cherubs facing the wall that you've just put the candles out on, their eyes are glowing a similar colour. It's this sort of uh, sort of gre like pale greenish almost like bioluminescence kind of glow. Right. So... Try... Is it only the bottom tier that's lit up? It's like the closest point you can see where it's starting to get a little bit shaded over. You can see this faint glow coming from the bottom Good. level. Right, so I'll just put all the candles out and see if it glows. Okay. So as you put all the candles out, you can see now that the um, the cherub facing the wall where you first extinguished the candles, their eyes are glowing. It's much more noticeable now that it's, it's darker in there. Mm. And you can see that the glow is almost arranging a pattern in the bottom of the fountain. So does the whole fountain turn if I try and turn it? Uh, make a strength trick. Oh, slightly better. Twelve. No movement from the fountain. But as you're leaning over to try and turn it, you can make out that the, the glow seems to be coming from specific tiles arranged in the bottom of the fountain. So 
So, what's I... in the fountain? Yeah, to, can, can I move the tiles? Is it tiles are complete? Fountain? No, but inspiration for trying. Um, there are the the tiles are, are firmly secured to the base of the fountain. Um, as you look at it, you can see that it's kind of looks like they're arranged like uh, very sort of basic lettering, but the constant sort of movement of the water makes it difficult to to make anything out more than that. I put my head in the fountain to get a better look. <laughs> okay. <laughs> as you submerge your head into the fountain and sort of like move it back and forth without the turbulence of the surface water you can make out these tiles are arranged to spell out love is blind all right so i cover the eyes of the glowing statue with okay my hand. how are you with you just putting your hand over yeah okay yeah. well you're not the barbarian you think you are <laughs> all of a sudden all the candles just boom, flare back into life and all four of the cherubs turn to face the centre of the fountain. And the cage just click and opens nice. to reveal the crystal shard. Easy. Right, right. Grab, grab the, the shard shit, and make like for the door. Perfect. Flawless execution. You grab the shard and you head straight for the door. And Xerox is there just going, wonderful, wonderful. That's the, that's the fastest anyone's done that in... Almost a hundred years. Well done. Well done. Good man. Good man. Good man. Well, I think we're done with the Wasteland Zone. That's four challenges, four Crystal Shards, only one zone, one challenge, and one Crystal Shard remaining. Shall we head on? Yes. <gasps> wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Let's. Claps his hands and all of you feel yourselves just bodily hoiked upwards. And there is this rushing sensation. You see mist and cloud just billowing past your face and um i'm gonna need all of you to make constitution checks please oh for fuck's mm. sake i'm gonna die for the second time today plus two though oh i got a 19 i'm sick i'm, uh, fine. I'm not that... sick oh, i got 19 as well no this is right. a straight this is a check. constitution check this is literally just to see how well your body deals with the stresses of being really hoiked skywards well, I can tell you, Tom, that I've been stabbed a lot tonight, so not much, because I got a three. Cool. Uh, Mick? I'm sure the wind whistles through you like a colander at this point. <laughs> what was that? Sorry, Mick? Thirteen. Thirteen. And Callus? Nineteen. Nineteen. Ooh. Okay. So all of you very briefly black out for a second. Um, in the case of Mike, your, your visual stimulus is just so overloaded, you can't register everything fast enough, so you have to sort of like buffer. So there's a big period I, have to, of... I have to wait for my gyroscopes to calibrate. Yeah, there's like a little like... moment where you've got the little pinwheel yeah. going around the centre of your vision. Oh, um... don't make me like some Apple software. What the fuck <laughs> is wrong with you? <laughs> you run on iOS. When man. you come to, you find that you are surrounded Ugh. by white clouds clear sky and this very sort of elaborate almost like marble architecture framed with uh, this sort of very fine gold and silver filigree work it's all very sort of tall uh, gentle slopes and arc very high pointed arcing sculptures and everything looks incredibly delicate almost fairy like and Xerix turns to you and goes welcome to the celestial zone this is your Ooh. final challenge. Who, Team Captain, will be taking on challenge number five? Can it be all of us? I don't see why not. Everyone, follow me. He basically splits into four copies of himself. Each one grabs you each by a hand and just hauls you through and then sort of as the ghost forms sort of like catch up and concertina back into one another, they throw each of you one at a time into a doorway a room. and slam it closed behind you. What you find in this room is uh, fairly 
bear. There is a pedestal in the centre with a small divot about the size of one of the crystal shards, but it is completely empty. On the left-hand side of the room is a small chest, and at the back of the room is a large mirror. Okay. Can I go look at my reflection in the mirror, please? You can. Check that I'm okay. Yeah. Um, are you, like, checking for injuries? Like... Yes, but also investigating. Oh. Muted myself halfway through that. Yep, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I am checking for injuries predominantly, but also to see if I can see anything in the mirror or to do with the mirror that might be helpful. Okay. Um, so you can just make me a straight investigation check then, please. Um, we'll go around the rest of the group, see what everyone else is up to. Callus, what are you doing? I'm going to go have a look at the chest on the left side of the room, I think. Yes, yep. so is. as you as you come into the room, it's on your left. Um, I'm just going to take, I'm not going to touch it yet. I just want to look at it and see if I can figure out if it's locked or trapped or anything by looking at it. And if not, okay. then I'm going to try and open. So just from uh, surface investigation, you can see that there is a, there's like a folding latch where normally the padlock would be fed through. Yep. There is no lock. The latch appears to be completely unsecured. Okay. I... Yeah, I'm going to open it. Just okay. carefully open it. Um, can you make me... Oh. Um, just, just a straight intelligence check, please. Uh, yeah. Uh... Uh, 13. Fantastic. You know how lids and hinges work, so you open the chest and there's nothing inside. It's ah. Just a chest. What's, um... And it's about, sort of, are we talking, you said it's a small it's chest. It's a small chest, so maybe sort of five? like two, two foot by a foot and a half okay. deep. It's quite small. Um, okay. Not sad. What did you get on your investigation check, sorry? Uh, 12. Okay, so as you look over your body, you can see that there are no, no, absolutely no signs of injury other than the damage to your clothing. Um, and as you sort of like, oh, well, quite pleased with that. You look over and you see the reflection of Callus opening the chest, and inside you can just see it is piled high with gemstones. Um, Mike, you're, what are you up to? Uh, I've got clowns to the left of me and jokers to the right of me. So I'm going to stay in the middle and check out the stool. So it's just a, a stone pedestal. About... A stone pedestal, sorry, yeah. I meant pedestal. It's fine. The thing in the centre of the room um, is about uh, so four foot high. Mm -hmm. um, kind of octagonal top to it, sort of swept column below and there is just a divot in the centre about like I say the same size as one of the crystal shards okay uh, do I still have my crystal shard you do yes yep I pop it in okay can you make me a perception check please sure can compadre perception Doo -doo -doo -doo. ooh oh 19 Okay. Nice. Absolutely nothing happens, but what you do notice is as you sort of look up, you catch your reflection in the mirror, and the clear white crystal that you've put into the pedestal in the mirror is your reflection holding a solid black crystal. Right. Um, Mick, uh, what are you up to? Can I relay that to the group? Yes, yep. Guys, look, look, it's, Mike. it's white here, but it's black over there. Look, awesome. it's white here, and it's black over there. Hmm. Can we see I it? move Seven the I chest in front of the mirror and open it towards the mirror. 
Uh, yep. Uh, just call this a straight strength check for. Oh, good. I'm so good at strength. Uh, I help him. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> no, so make roll it with advantage. 11. Oh well. In that case, Wait. still 11. Um. <laughs> we are equally weak. Fair enough. So as you move the chest in front of the mirror and open it, you can see that um, the, the chest, as you open it, completely empty. But in the reflection, it is, again, just piled high with gemstones. Are there any that look like the gem that we're after? Um, uh, let's call it an investigation check. These are not the gems you're looking for. Just uh, see if you that, how many nerds did it take to move a chest? 17. Um, given the information that Mikeo has already relayed to you, you can see sitting directly on top of the chest is a jet black flicker of the crystal shards that you've already recovered. So, so it looks exactly mirror, identical to the one that he's showing going, oh, look at this, in the reflection. So in, in the mirror, can I try and grab it like with my reflection sort of looking and then put it on the pedestal so I'm not actually grabbing anything but I'm doing so you're just kind of like using the mirror to guide yeah. your hand yes. okay yep cool uh, go ahead and make me a sleight of hand check please BRB I think my cat's locked itself in a cupboard fantastic <laughs> brilliant cat um, that's a what 21 a, what a legend okay oh so as you you sort of you're checking the mirror, you're checking your position, your hand, and you're just sort of like like a really crap version of an arcade crane game. You just sort of like left <laughs> yeah, like a crane a bit, game on back, nightmare mode. Left, left a bit down a bit, and as you get your hand over the black gemstone, you close your hand onto completely thin air. I know that the crystal in the mirror does not make any appearance. It's almost as if your hand passes just through an image of it in the mirror. Mm. And as you start to sort of put your hand further into the chest and move it around you see your... it's almost like you're just moving it through mist. Like the image in the, the mirror is kind of disturbed with the present hand no. moving around, but like you don't feel anything sort of resist or connect with your arm as you're moving it through. Alright, uh, so... We can't reach through the mirror, can we? So I like try and carefully press my hand against the mirror to try and take from the okay. reflection, if you see what I mean. That's gently. Fine. So are you like reaching towards the gems, or are you so just like, reaching to the mirror yeah. itself? One of the things that that uh, Mick was trying to do in his reflection, try and reach what is there. Now that he's got it like right up against the mirror. So All of my logic circuits it. are screaming at you right now. Okay, <laughs> so as you put your hand to the mirror. Kind of feels like you're running your hand through cold water as the mirror just gives and allows your hand to move through. Can you make me a dexterity saving throw, please? Oh, someone's getting sucked in and lost in the mirror forever! Can uh, we smash the mirror if you get falls in? Uh, 13. 13, okay. So you just pitch it forward into the mirror, but you don't lose your footing, but the sensation of just being pulled through this mirror is really unsettling and you find yourself in a reverse copy of the room you were just in as you look back at the mirror you've just come through you can see the inverted image of your ah. teammates your teammates have just seen this happen and see the inverted image of you on the other side of the mirror as you look down at the chest full of gems, you can see that the um, the entire color palette has shifted. What was the jet black crystal on top is now clear white. On my side, or, yes. on, or they can see the what? Okay. On your side, it appears clear. Um, Everyone other than Callus, can you make me a perception check, please? Uh, 16 for me. Shocking. Shocking. Eight. You say that, but I'm obviously distracted because I got to six. Okay. So everyone with the exception of Mike is kind of either preoccupied trying to 
crane game invisible gems out of this box. Confused as to why the party's wizard has just fallen through a mirror. But with Mycure, you hear a a very familiar mechanical sound that draws your attention to the ceiling. And as you look up, you see um, a panel in the ceiling slide open. There's a set of doors. And a uh, sort of length of chain drops down, secured to the far end of the opening, closest to the mirror. The other end of the chain is attached to a large spiked metal ball. Oh, no. And you can hear a ticking noise. Almost that like... A mysterious ticking noise. A mysterious ticking noise indeed. Is it a pipe bomb? No. no. <laughs> yes. Horrible. Horrible. Go with <laughs> what would happen if you put the black, anyway. If you put the crystal on the pedestal your end? Yeah, that both of me. them together on the pedestal. Together yeah. forever. Yeah, okay. I For will, reference, will, sound right, is right. travelling uninterrupted through this mirror. Okay. I will do as they suggest and take the crystal and put it in the same place that Mike or put it. Okay. But on my side. So you take the white crystal, place it yeah. onto the pedestal. White and yeah. black again, why is it? Mike, you're, you hear a sort of uh, a ding, and on the pedestal in front of you is a jet black crystal. Uh, <laughs> the, 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 the thing. So, Use your words, Mike. Gem, gem, <laughs> crystal in the okay. dimple. I'm guessing then that we have to put a. Take the black crystal and put it on the pedestal through the mirror to get a white crystal this side. Because all you guys have seen That's on the... That's segregation again. That's ridiculous. All you guys have seen on the... So, Mike, your Mick, and Nosad, you've just seen Callus pick up this solid black gem, put it on the pedestal, and a black gem on your side. Callus, you've picked up a crystal clear gem, place it on the pedestal, and you can see a crystal clear gem on the other side. I will relay that information. <laughs> for what so, okay. So, if we give him, like if someone hands him through the mirror the black gem and he puts it on the pedestal, will that make a white get... gem yeah. on this side, or is it going to turn white again? But the the original gem. That we put in on that side was Mycure's gem. Yeah, but he's still holding that. Okay, yeah. So. Everything's reversed. It's, yeah. I'm terrible. That's fine. Right. <sighs> so. If. What happens if we pick up the black gem our end? Does it disappear off the pedestal his end? Certainly try. Yeah, I'll try and pick it up our end okay. to see what happens. Um, so as you, you pick up the black gem, it just disappears mm. from the pedestal on Callus's side of the mirror. Um, Mick, can you make me a wisdom saving throw, please? Oh, great. Uh -oh. What, what is my wisdom? Terrible problem. Yes, right. It's an 18. Okay, can you roll a d100, please? Oh, great. <sighs> Whilst this is going on, uh, Nossad, what are you doing? Might what be you, dance. What, what are you thinking? <laughs> I don't know, I'm just so scared of getting stabbed you know. now. Based on um, that fear, you have now noticed that there is this large spiked ball hanging from the ceiling. Brilliant. And Great. as you look at it going, I really hope I don't get hit by that, you hear the ticking noise and it just goes boom, and just drops down a couple of inches and the chain just jingles. Of course. Better hurry up, guys. I got a 20. 
20. Oh, Christ. Okay. <clears throat> For reasons you don't fully understand, both of your palms are forced directly downwards, and just a torrent of grease comes out of your hands and <laughs> coats the floor. The entire okay. area you are standing That's on grease. is now covered in grease. Well, that's not happened before. Full Greek to me. Great. Um, so, am I... Other than the fact I've shot grease everywhere... <laughs> is Am I holding Terrible the gem? Or is it, is it you, are, you are holding a black gem, yes. So... If I slide over to the mirror... Yep. And hand... Or tr walk through or try and hand it through the mirror to... Callus and try and get him to put that one on the pedestal. Okay. And he hands me his. Uh, swap. Oh so no, his was disappeared. Yeah, my, mine's gone to. Yeah, so I'll hand him that one. So, see. quick recap for the transit of gem property. Mike Your has taken out a crystal clear gem, placed it on the pedestal on the entrance side. Mm -hmm. Their reflection has shown them a solid black gem. They have then taken their crystal off and put it back in whatever Mike has for pockets. Callus has entered the mirror, and from your perspective, you've seen him pick up a solid black gem, place it on the pedestal, and a solid black gem has appeared on the entrance side. All right, so he, he, he can see that I'm holding what looks to him then like a completely fine gem. Yep. So, Callus, from your perspective, you can see them holding... You can see that Mick is holding a crystal clear gem. Yes. Okay, so... So, if I pass it through the mirror to him... Okay. Uh, can you make me a dexterity saving throw, please? Oh, God, he's going to get dragged in with me as well. No, because no. dexterity is actually I'm good at. Uh, that's a 23. Okay. Oh, okay. We should just walk out with this um, gem and leave. You are hauled on. through the mirror, but you just slide in and then just do like a pirouette on the grease. So greasy. Just, you're so greasy that you just, whoo, and just, <laughs> yeah, you full on like pose your way through. But as you come through, you take a look at the gem in your hand and it is crystal clear. Right. Um, Mike, you're well. and uh, Notad. You've just seen Mick get hauled through the mirror, holding a black gem. And on their side, you can still see the gem is solid black. We see it as black. Yes. And what colour does Mike have in his pocket? Clear. Crystal clear. Clear. So we've got a clear one. Let's go. Me and you, Mike. So we've still already got that one. Fuck him! <laughs> <laughs> Leave them, they're as good as dead. <laughs> okay. So if Makio puts his clear one back on the thing, we'll end up with a black one in here, won't we? Which, when you walk through the mirror, will turn we'll clear. clear. So, yeah. Makio, as you place your crystal clear gem on the pedestal on the entrance side, you look, at, you look in the mirror and you can see that you have placed down a solid black gem. So Mick and Callus, on your side, on the pedestal, there appears to be a solid white gem. Oh. Oh. But then uh, Mike Your sort of takes it off and puts it back on. Mike Your and Notad from your side, all you see is this black gem being placed down and lifted, down and lifted. Callus and Mick from your side, you see a crystal clear gem appear and then disappear. And appear and then disappear. We, we even know what the end game is. Like, well, we're, we're not even fucking doubling it. We're, like, we're, we're never get, we're getting, not getting a new shit. one. It's basically you're just <laughs> making the same one shit. I don't get this. Is there a cage in this room? Not that you've seen. And there isn't one on the mirror side. Because nope, if the we only take thing it on our... the mirror side, is a box full of gemstones. We're just basically trying to get another gem out. Yeah, that's, so that's, that, that box full of gemstones, that 
we've already got one out of there, and it's black, isn't it? On our Take side, we see it as white. Take another but they one. See it as what black. happens? Yeah. Well, if we go through the mirror, it goes white, doesn't it? So we just pick it up and walk through the mirror. Do it. And we walk back through the mirror. Um, yeah. as you approach the mirror and place your hand against it, there is resistance. Resistance, as in it's difficult, or we as can't. As in, it feels like solid mirror. Crap. It was nice knowing you. So, Mark, so if we, if I put the crystal, if I hand the crystal to Callus, yep, and then try to walk through the mirror, is it still solid? So you hand the crystal over to Callus. You go to walk back through the mirror. Your hand is still covered in grease, and it just leaves a nice smear on a very solid mirror. Great. Now we can't see half of you. <laughs> At this yeah. point, you hear Xerox's voice going, Have you tried some of the other colours? Take more gems out of the, the uh, thing. Wait, yeah. wait, wait. It's just like, do you, does anybody remember the pin game Mastermind? I'm not familiar with that game. Well, fuck, okay. <laughs> no, I know what you're about, but... <laughs> never, never mind. I was so uh, we'll just grab a different coloured gem then and stick it on the fucking thing. Get all the gems on there. Jam <laughs> them in one by one. Jam them in. Okay. Uh, Mick, Let's do that. as you sort of just start rooting through, just, find, just trying to find another gem, a lot of these are like different cuts. There's like the sort of the more sort of like ruby cuts with like the sort of point to it. And as you're going through the box, you find a crystal clear crystal shard oh oh as he holds it up my cure and no sad from your point of view this is jet black oh 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 try that one try that one we put it on the pedestal then as you place it on the pedestal my cure you see a crystal clear gem appear on the pedestal on the entrance side oh 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 i got one I got one! So we now have. Right. From the mirror side, the gem has disappeared, and Mike is now quite proudly holding two crystal shards. Right. They look black to us, but yeah, they. As you look over at him, you see um, a series of runes across the top of the doorway behind him just light up and spell out Leave as you enter. So, so we have to walk through the door in the reflection. Yeah, yeah do that. We we just walk through our that yeah current good. door. Okay, yeah, we leave we leave through this side door. Okay. As you open the door, you come back out, and you see Xerox is there, and they turn to you and just go ah. Great. Yes. No, say! I'm just yeah. messing with you. Well done! <laughs> Come on, <laughs> out, all of you. Ha 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 Five crystal shards. Are you ready for the final challenge? Just one Always. more. Follow me then! And he snaps his fingers and you find yourself just in this complete void space. Completely black, but with um, almost like silver industrial flooring underneath you. And in front of you is a pedestal with uh, what appears to be a slightly larger of the variant you've just seen in the the mirror room and there are five divots in there it's like team if you would like to place your gems into the crystal pedestal we shall begin the final challenge please go jump into the booth and grab all the money <laughs> when do the oh, lions oh, yeah, come out gonna... no the tigers oh, oh me i'll do it i'll jump in the booth go on mike put the gems in yeah, let's put the gems in. 
So, Get Mike, as you set each one of the crystal shards into the slots on the pedestal, they light up. And of course they a do. Faint, faint chime. And as you place the fifth one in, the chime builds to a slightly higher pitch. And the crystals just drop down into the pedestal. And the top of the surf the top surface of the pedestal just ripples like water and becomes completely smooth. And then a series of letters start to light up across the top of the pedestal. And it reads Shorter than mountains, taller than stones. In hidden places we make our homes. Fierce and loud, yet quiet and shy. You'll find us here, beneath the sky. What are we? Books. <laughs> no, I only got the very first bit of that. I'm trying to rapidly write this down. Higher than mountains. So, I'll read it again. Yeah, Shorter please. than mountains, taller yeah. than stones. In hidden yeah. places we make our homes. Fierce and loud, yet quiet and shy. You'll find us here beneath the sky. Dwarves. <laughs> I was thinking dwarves. <laughs> I feel like it's probably not dwarves. Tunnels. Am you muted? Or I can't hear you. No, M is, sure. no. M is... <laughs> M's deafened herself. You have we deafened, deafened her? yourself. We, we can't... Don't worry. <laughs> there I, we I, go. I, I, I don't worry about it. I had both muted and deafened. <laughs> we know. Top tier. We know. <laughs> uh, I didn't even press Ill. these buttons. I was just rambling, mostly. Just blame the cat. All I'd said was... Shorter than mountains, most things. Taller than stones, most things. And that was as far as I got. Fierce, hidden, hidden, hidden places fierce. we make our homes. Fierce and something. I said graves. So I don't know if that was heard. I don't know if that would. None of it was heard. De it could be. It could be a goblin. It could be a dwarf. It could be a rat. It could be a fucking rabbit. It could be a fox. There are lots of things that live underground that are hidden and fierce. Graves. The undead. Um, if we just keep shouting things at you, will you eventually go, yeah? <laughs> Zerek looks at you and goes, and there are going to be about 300 well, answers. I'm going uh, to need a final answer from you. As a team, uh, you must decide God. amongst yourselves what you think the answer is. And then speak words, Xerix, I am a... Adventurer. No, 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 no. You, you speak the word Xerox, I am a, and then give me your answer. Okay. But it could literally uh, be loaded. I am the right answer. Z uh, <laughs> you want to go with that? Please don't. I am the right answer. But what about Goblin? Didn't we know he's a Goblin? <laughs> he is a Goblin, Jesus. yeah. But... You sort of drifted off playing harmonica again. The mountains, all the stones, and hidden places we make our homes. And hidden in places. It's and. I'm trying. I'm fucking. Shadows. Again. Shorter, yeah. than, shorter than mountains, taller than stones. These are the hidden places where we have our homes. Shadows hidden not really taller than home. stones necessarily. You can have. Really tiny shadows. Yeah. Fierce and loud, yet quiet and shy. You'll find us here beneath the sky. Goblins. What was it? I am. What's his face? If you decide on your answer, then you speak the words Xerox, I am a, and give me your answer. Go on, Captain. Bring it home. 
We either say that or do I just say what I am? No, no, you say Xerx, I am a, uh, yeah, and then the answer to the riddle. Okay, right. Sorry, I should be clear. The, <laughs> the specific conditions are, in order to answer the riddle and for me to accept your answer as correct, you say Xerx, I am a goblin. At this point, Xerx's expression completely freezes and his eyes just blare with, like, ethereal light and just goes, The form of the Destroyer has been chosen! And just drifts down. Oh, good. Ah, this is going to be like oh, Ghostbusters and we'll get the Marshmallow Man. And from a pool ahead of you rises a crystal form, maybe four, five probably three feet tall of a goblin made entirely of crystal. Great. And I'm going to need everyone to roll for initiative, please. Good! Oh Owl bear <laughs> Or mountain. Yeah. All right. Thank God you never said mountain. <laughs> Shit! <laughs> oh, that could be a really easy one. Pretty big, though. Oh, hello. Uh, I get bonuses. To... Oh, my God. It carries on. I'm having the nightmare rolls. Got a 13 for you, Tom. Cool. Take me off. Take me down to the Baroness. Okay, so sorry. If I can just get you to go through that again. What was that, Mike? Your? 13 for me. Okay, 13 for yourself. And no, Tad. One which makes me have a four. Okay. Callus? 25. Oh my Fantastic. God. And Mick? A 20. 20. Brutal. Right. What even works on a crystal? I, yeah, I'm just thinking this. Mm. Okay. So, let's get everyone... Loaded in. So, Callus, you're up first. Mike, you're, you follow, followed by Notad, and sorry, I've missed someone there because Avre has decided to have a bit of a fit. Mick, what did you get? 20. 20. So it'd be Callus, then Mick. Yep, Callus, then Mick, then Mike, you're, then Notad. So, Callus, you're up first. What would you like to do? Okay. First of all, I'm assuming this thing is like animated. It's not just a statue. It's not. It is. It is a crystal bad. goblin that has already started to draw a sword from a scabbard. Oh crap! Uh, I will. Oh, can I do that? No, I can. I will cast. Scorching ray on it. All three um, beams at it. Okay, cool. So, um, can you make me a ranged spell attack, please? Yeah. Uh, that is a four plus ten total. Ten. Yep. Okay. So the first ray goes completely wide misses this sort of as it's drawing its sword it just raises a crystal shield and it just shards off and there's this beautiful sort of prism of light as the scorching ray bounces away from it go ahead and roll your second attack please uh 12 12 again it's another block from the shield <sighs> okay well the third one's a 25 so i'm really open that one it 25 definitely hits roll me some damage please uh that is Ten. Ten. The goblin ten. immediately shatters into a thousand crystal shards. Oh. Oh. Xerix appears and goes, Wonderful! You've beaten the final challenge! Congratulations! Do I believe him? Uh, insight check. I had something very interesting lined up for my game. Uh, 18. Uh, yeah, he seems genuinely excited that you've beaten the challenge. 
In fact, he's already I... opened a doorway at the back of the room and says, Follow me to receive your prize. I follow I just... him. Yeah, I'll follow him. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'll follow, I, I'll I... follow anyone blindly at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I follow cautiously. I'm super sus of this now. I've died and come back. I'm like, I'm just... Mick, no, in, in what manner are you anymore. following? I'm going to moonwalk in. Cool, that's fine. Can you make me a performance check, please, to see how cool your <laughs> yeah, moonwalk sure. is? Certainly. <laughs> uh, where's, where's performance on here? Uh, oh, we're going to plus one. So, that's a 17. 17. It's flawless. It is yep. flawless. There's still a little bit of grease on your shoes, and you're just yep, like, woo, straight across. <laughs> So as you follow uh, Xerox, he takes you into a large like library space. There's a little chair and desk and just walls and walls and walls and books of stacks. He goes, so, your prize is an audience with yours truly, Xerox, maze builder, imagineer. What would you ask of me? We need your cipher. We need the cipher thingy for... For someone's birthday. It's their birthday. Happy birthday <laughs> to you. Is it your Happy birthday? Oh, what's going on over here? Birthday to I no, I don't know. Look, birthday still confuse me. Fair enough. Well, you've beaten my challenges, you've beaten my maze. The prize is yours to name. Here. Here is my cipher and his ghostly Jeez, hand cool. just pulls out like this mouldering piece of paper that is just barely legible like bits of it are starting to flake off uh mp3 oh. player who has the mp3 player uh i do okay rub it, rub it on the parchment uh can you just make me a uh i'll kind of check with advantage because you are familiar with the uh the use of these. 25. Cool. Um, there is a, 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 a immediate glow from the spell shard and you see the lettering on this paper sort of almost like illuminate and lift as a copy and then just go straight up into the spell shard. And when you check it and look back you, you, you review it and you're like, ah yes! This is an exact copy of that manuscript. Excellent. Let's, uh, let's go. I mean, okay. I thought... you you could stay for tea if you like. It's kind of lonely being a ghost down here. I don't eat. By, by I myself. Away. You don't eat either. It's just nice to have the company sometimes, I guess. But if you must be on your way, the exit is over there. There's just a door, like a, a green exit sign over the top of it. Any of you staying for tea with this? No, I don't want any more of his No, I think I'm... I'm leaving. Excellent. Yeah. I'm, I'm already walking towards the door. I, I leave the... I leave the... Yeah, I, I'm out of there. I'm Addy. Oh well. Well, it has been lovely to have you. Thank you so much for playing. You all have a safe journey now. Take care. And just waves you off through the door. And as you make your way out, you sort of turn around. And he's like, he's just see him sort of like kind of quite dejected. And he's just setting up a little teapot and two saucers and he's two. Set his whole maze now, anyway. And two teacups. He starts pouring himself a cup of tea and looks kind of wistfully at the second cup. That is insisting we ask for a unicorn. And then he sort of perks up a little bit and just snaps his fingers and the unicorn reappears yeah. next to him and he starts pouring mm. a second cup of tea for the unicorn as the door closes behind you. Oh. The... Um, uh, as far as you're aware, Claude is still sweeping up the temple zone. <laughs> um, so, there is a brief moment where everything is completely black as the door shuts. 
and then the uh, your, your vision starts to return and you see in front of you the big round stone door with the bugbear face in the middle of it and goes thank you for playing please leave a review and the door sort of like turns and there's just like five little star symbols appear across the front of the door of one a minus one star you just see the door go oh well that's disappointing but thank you for your feedback <laughs> it just turns back to a black bear face i'm a yelp reviewer <laughs> i heard a few yelps from inside so that <laughs> thing is And that is the story of how you beat Xerox's crystal maze and retrieved his cipher he for Lyra Boromar's birthday present. <laughs> and with that, we come to the end of tonight's ah, session. Oh, hey! Have, uh... Cat tax. Hey, he looks furious. He does look Oh, cool. he's wow. Like, he's going to kill you in <laughs> your sleep. Mad. Uh, this kid, <laughs> human. Angry cat. <laughs> it shut me in a cupboard. Good God. <laughs> that was Jamie, actually. So, that brings us to the end of <laughs> oh. tonight's adventure. Um, my thanks once again to everyone for playing and everyone for watching along live on Twitch or catching the VOD when it eventually gets uploaded. Uh, we'll be back in two weeks' time on Sunday, 28th of February to do this all over again. Um, until then, stay safe, wash your hands, wear a mask, stay indoors, and we'll see you next time. Good night. Good night, Dice Roll fans. Bye, Dice Roll fans. Bye. 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 Keep waving. Okay, bye. bye. bye.